Well, 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 the United States has assassinated the leader of Qatayib al-Hezbollah, um, also known as Iraqi Hezbollah, um, which I think would be – I think this is a great opportunity to uh, sit down any of your friends or family who, uh, generally speaking, just trusts in the mission of the military – and the wars, you know, uninformed people. I mean, not people who know, you know, who know very much, because obviously people who are well informed don't, you know, they don't buy into this nonsense. But people who just generally like, oh yeah, of course, I, you know, I support the troops, and so whatever the latest war is, I'm sure it's very necessary. Excuse the hiccup. Sit them down, and just ask them. Hey, remember that that time we invaded Iraq in, in 2003? And they go, oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. We we're supposed to defeat that bad man, Saddam Hussein. Uh, and you tell them, oh yeah, and you know the people who helped fight with us against Saddam Hussein because Saddam Hussein was such a bad guy? They go, oh yeah, 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 the freedom fighters. Well, now we're assassinating their leaders because supposedly now they're our enemy too. So Saddam... He was, he was a big bad guy. We had to defeat him. We had to go into Iraq, defeat him, and install uh, this ideal Iraqi government, this pro-American puppet state. Oh, and that puppet state is now our enemy. Because Qatayib al-Hezbollah is a part of the Iraqi military. They're part of the popular mobilization forces. You see, Iraq is uh, a somewhat of a smart country. Instead of trying to make the um, uh, you know, the private militias, um, you know, the citizens, the armed citizenry, their enemies like the United States does. Um, Iraq, like early America, has decided to uh, incorporate the armed citizenry and the uh, private militia groups into uh, their national defense. And so, yes, you have a conventional Iraqi army, but then you have the popular mobilization forces which are all of the militias. It's all of the, you know, guys with guns who are ready to fight and die to protect their country. You could call them the Oath Keepers of Iraq. And Iraqi Hezbollah is just one of many groups. But your ill-informed uh, friend or neighbor or uh, family member might say to you, but CNN and Fox tell me that uh, Iraqi Hezbollah uh, are puppets of Iran. These are uh, an Iranian-backed militia. These can't be our allies. And they would be correct. Hezbollah, uh, in, both in Iraq and Lebanon, is very much an Iranian-backed militia and uh, to the sense that uh, they coordinate with Iran. From what I understand, like you know, there there are they, they throw this term around so much Iranian backed militia that it means almost nothing. But in the case of Hezbollah, it's actually pretty accurate. Now I think Iraqi Hezbollah is let coordinates less with Iran directly uh, than uh, than the Lebanese Hezbollah. But still, I mean, they, they uh, from what I understand, they are overtly uh, aligned with Iran. But so is the rest of Iraq. Iraq is uh, one big Iranian-backed militia. Iraq is more of an Iranian proxy than it ever was an American proxy. Why? Gee, how could this have happened? Well, it's quite simple. When we overthrew Saddam Hussein and installed uh, the new democratic government, well, guess who's most popular in Iraq. What is the, the, the plurality of voters? Who do they support in Iraq? It's the Shiites who are aligned with Iran. So Iran is popular in Iraq. So if you have democracy in Iraq, uh, the way that its borders are constituted, you end up with uh, a pro-Iranian government. It's that simple. After all, Saddam Hussein was a mortal enemy of Iran. Even though George W. Bush told us that Iran, North Korea, and Iraq are forming an axis of evil. You know, three completely disconnected countries that have absolutely nothing in common. 
And so you overthrow Saddam Hussein, Iran's mortal enemy. Well, guess what? The dissidents against Saddam Hussein been aligned with Iran for decades. In fact, they were in exile in Iran. Everyone who hated Saddam Hussein the most, the, the, big, the political big shots who would have been assassinated had they stayed in Iraq, fled to Iran. And so they were very loyal to Iran, and they still are. They're good buddies. You know why? Because probably because Iran does not bomb their capital city. America does do that. America just bombed Baghdad, the capital of what is supposed to be, you know, an American ally, a country that was uh, completely it was wiped off the face of the earth by the United States and then rebuilt from the ground up. We destroyed Iraq and then uh, went about rebuilding. And this is how we rebuilt it. We rebuilt it into the country that it is today. Um, Iraq is a fundamentally different country than it was um, at the start of 2003. Baghdad wasn't even like a, uh, you know, a, a, a 100% Shiite city. The U.S. helped uh, the Shiites ethnically cleanse uh, their political enemies. And so now everyone uh, who lives in that part of Iraq, um, they're all the, you know, they're all the kinds of Iraqis who are affiliated with Iran. And so that is the end result of uh, America's greatest military intervention uh, since World War II. I don't think that the commitment – I don't think that there was a more high-profile um, nation-building project aside from Iraq other than – Germany and Japan in the wake of World War II. I mean, you could argue Afghanistan, but I mean, everyone really knew, you know, oh, Afghanistan is not, pretty much on like your first day there. Even the soldiers were like, there is nothing worth like protecting here. There's nothing worth trying to rebuild. Afghanistan is like not a society. It is, you know, it's hell on earth. That's what Afghanistan is. But Iraq was an ancient civilization. There's a lot of history in Iraq. There's a lot of, you know, great art um, to come out of Iraq. There was real culture in Iraq. There was something that could have been rebuilt there. And so the United States tried um, to make Iraq into the next West Germany uh, or post-war Japan. And they just couldn't do it because they're that dumb. Because the United States was too stupid to actually – they were too arrogant to realize that if you put – if you get rid of uh, Iran's mortal enemies and you install Iran's best friends to control this country, then you're going to end up with an Iranian-aligned country. And that would be okay if America didn't have this massive hate boner for Iran. And have this irrational hatred for Iran. You know, we always talk about, you know, on our news here about how, oh, those crazy Iranians, they're always chanting death to America. Well, every time you turn on the news, American politicians are chanting death to Iran. John McCain wanting to bomb, bomb, bomb Iran. Lindsey Graham, every time he opens his mouth, what does he say? Bomb Iran. Everything in the world that goes wrong for the United States gets blamed on either Iran or Russia. If it happens in Europe, they blame it on Russia. If it happens in the Middle East, something goes wrong, they blame it on Iran, no matter what it is. And so this is the world we live in. This is what it has come to. This is how truly powerless America is. We're having to resort to not even doing like, you know, classy, um, you know, espionage, um, James Bond style assassinations. We're not sending in assassins to Iraq to kill this guy. Um, the U.S. isn't even trying to get its people on the ground in Iraq and have them, you know, go around sniping uh, their enemies or poisoning people. No, we just bomb Iraq whenever we want. We just bomb their capital city of our supposed ally, turning it into a war zone, a country which we supposedly rebuilt which we've had 20 years 
to get back on its feet. A country which seems to be totally peaceful. Um, for as long as America leaves it alone, and then all of a sudden America comes in and tosses a grenade into the hornet's nest, and then, oh, what do you know, Iraq turns into a war zone. Remember, Iraq had a few years where it was doing okay, and then all of a sudden this ISIS thing comes along and destabilizes Iraq. By the way, Iraqi Hezbollah guys, mortal enemies of ISIS. They helped to feed ISIS, just like, you know, Iran and Syria did in Russia. Anyway, Iraq after, was starting to rebuild itself after the disastrous U.S. war in Iraq. And then all of a sudden, ISIS comes, comes marching in to uh, conquer... Oh, God, it's been so long, I forgot my Iraqi geography again. Uh, what is the name of that province? Anbar. Gosh, didn't I forget Anbar, like, last week, too? Anyway... ISIS, a CIA puppet organization, a CIA-backed militia that they were using uh, to try and overthrow Assad. Said, you know what? We don't just want Assad. We don't just want Assad, Syria. We want uh, Iraq as well, because after all, Syria and Iraq were both allied with Iran against ISIS. They were both allies. So, of course, why would ISIS, you know, like leave Iraq out of the fight? ISIS was doing well. They said, "Well, we've captured West or we've captured Eastern Syria. Let's capture Western Iraq." And then Iraq had another uh, prolonged war, a third Iraq war. But then eventually ISIS was defeated. That calmed down, and Iraq was getting back to normal until again yesterday, the U.S. comes in and bombs Iraq and creates chaos. You know, it is something that would be so tragic and like just soul crushing if it was happening to me but because it happens to other people and you know it's just my government that is bumbling and you know just just bumbles into all these situations i have to laugh because if you don't laugh um how else would i keep from crying it's just the most absurd situation imaginable so anyway uh with that said i will see you folks back here in the next one